If you are chasing an SSD that comes in with a great price and also carries a five-year warranty, as well as having the Acronis TrueImage software attached to it, which allows you to quickly get off a hard drive and then copy all those files seamlessly to the SSD and be up and going with much faster speeds, then the WD Blue SN570 NVMe SSD may be the right choice for you. Now today's video is sponsored by WD. Though as you guys know, I only take sponsorships from products that I believe have merit. And this drive certainly has merit when it comes to something that's reliable, has a great storage capacity, and carries fast speeds. And speaking of those speeds, here's where I run two different tests with two different programs. The first being HD Tune Pro, which then stresses this SSD across 100 gigabytes. This is sort of like a torture test for any SSD that comes through here. And here's where the WD Blue did well, phenomenally well on the read speeds, getting over 3000 megabytes per second across that whole 100 gigabytes. Then when it comes to the write speeds, after about 10 gigabytes, it does drop down from 3000 megahertz down to around 500 megabytes per second. So this is absolutely fine if you are a content creator editing 1080p or 4K video where you need those read speeds to be really fast, especially as a scratch drive. And also if you wanna do a fresh install of Windows, here's where I calculated the time it took to install Windows 11 and the WD Blue SM570 NVMe also performed really well, even better in comparison to the game load times. Also the second data intensive test was with Crystal Disk Mark. And here's where we tested two different file sizes with a one gigabyte and also eight gigabyte test. And here's where the speeds actually went above the 3,500 megabytes per second advertised on the box. So when it comes to advertising, I like to see that manufacturers are providing what they say is printed on that box. And so WD with this blue SN570 is definitely delivering, though the most impressive thing that I thought personally with this drive was those other bench, was those other numbers that are showing that the input and outputs per second is extremely high, especially for a drive that's coming in under $100. And also the latency was just as impressive as those inputs and outputs per second, making this a very snappy drive for doing a variety of things. Of course, when it comes to video editing, if you're a content creator or if you're editing photos, this is really going to come in handy to have a fast access time when it comes to moving files around and also accessing those files when it comes to video editing. So if you are using an older hard drive or even a 2.5 inch SATA SSD, this makes a lot of sense to get something that's affordable like the WD Blue and also get access to much faster speeds. Where if we look at the case of the old hard drive, things could be very slow to the point where it could break your creative workflow and you may even get other device related issues because things just become so slow. And I've definitely seen this in the past with Adobe Premiere Pro, where things slow down to a frustrating level and you're trying to figure out what it is. So the WD Blue, if you've got this in your system, then you're definitely not going to be wondering if it's your storage that is the problem. Though speaking of Adobe Premiere Pro, if you do get the SM570 from Western Digital, you also get an included one month membership trial to the Adobe Creative Cloud. And that of course offers more than just uh, Premiere Pro. You get Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, Lightroom, InDesign, Animator, and Audition, for example. Of course, NVMe drives aren't all just about the speeds and lower latencies. It's also about lower power consumption too. Where on my test system, I had just the M.2 and then I put a hard drive on later on and the power consumption increased roughly three watts from the wall. And I know it's not a huge deal, but it's always a decent thing to reduce power consumption, especially when electricity prices are going up worldwide. The last benefit to an M.2 NVMe drive such as the SM570 is that you don't need any extra cables like you would have to use on a traditional hard drive or a 2.5 inch SATA SSD. You can just simply put this in your motherboard. This is also a single sided M.2 2280 PCIe Gen 3 X4 drive. So it'll have no problems working on any system that has an NVMe M.2 slot. Though all that goodness aside, there's really only more goodness when it comes to the SN570 Blue. And that is, you also get augmented benefits like the WD dashboard, which allows you to check on the health of your drive very quickly and easily. And as we mentioned before, there's that true Acronis image software, which usually comes in at $50, and that's included for five years with the WD Blue, allowing you to easily 
copy any drive to the WD Blue and make it a true clone, or you can just simply back up different files, making life transitioning to M.2 NVMe that much easier. Now, of course, speaking about five years, this is my favorite part with this drive is that it's a great value option and comes with that five year warranty. Now for the blue lineup, you can get these in a 250 gigabyte, a 500 gigabyte or a one terabyte as we've used here in the video. The one terabyte will carry the fastest speeds followed by the 500 gigabyte and then the 250 gigabyte. Also, this drive does use three layer TLC flash memory as opposed to some other drives which may use cheaper four layer QLC, which is much slower than the three layer TLC featured in the WD Blue SN570. Anyhow, guys, that's about it for today's video. If you want to check out this drive, then I will put some links in the description below. Big thanks to WD for sponsoring this video out. And by the time you see this, I should probably be in Japan and giving you guys some different kind of content, which I'm sure you will enjoy. And with that aside, do let us know in the comment section below what you think of the blue SN570 lineup from WD. Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Railgar5. And they ask, they are letting people visit Japan now. And to answer this question directly, they aren't letting tourists in and I actually am not going there for tourism. I'm actually going there to see my son and that's how I was able to obtain a visa. Hope that answers that question. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in the next video very soon. Peace out for now.